Joe Rogan did not apologize, and I'm tired of the media saying that he did because he did not. I'm going to talk about that, and I'm going to stick specifically to that, and we're going to start right now. Hi, my name is Kyle, and welcome to the channel. In this video, I'm going to talk to you about what's going on right now with Joe Rogan. I'm sure you've seen it all over the internet that he, well, I'll get in that in a second. But I'm sure you heard that he apologized, and a lot of the people on the right are you know, are getting mad at him and a lot of people on the left are celebrating and some people are saying he didn't go far enough. And I'm here to tell you from my Facebook page here, this is what I put up there. Joe Rogan did not apologize. The media is lying as usual. Now, before you go any further, let me just say this. He did say, I'm sorry, but that's not an apology. He said, talking to Joni Mitchell and Neil Young, talking about, I'm sorry, I pissed you off. That's the same thing as if your younger brother or sister did something to you and you pushed them and your mom said, tell your brother or sister, you're sorry. You say, well, I'm sorry. I'm sorry you got mad that I pushed you down. Okay. That's not an apology. And so, yes, he said, I'm sorry, but an apology is in context saying you're sorry for the effect that you're offended, that you're uh, uh, accused to be offended of. The media and the left are saying that because they want to misappropriate what he said for their own doing. Why is that? Well, I can't tell you that here. Go to gate.theconservativetake.com, gate.theconservativetake.com. There, I'll have a full video. I'll react to the entire video and tell you exactly why he said what he said, because he was simply just explaining his thought process of getting to the truth. And I think this really floored him, but I will tell you the real reasons why all that. Of course, YouTube won't let me say it here, well, go check it out. It's a free site. Go check it out. Just sign up there, gate.theconservativetake.com, and I'll have that video out for you. But in the meantime, I want to go over some articles here that the media had put out, you know, and I'm seeing this, this narrative that's being created. You see here, if you just click on just Joe Rogan and just go into, you know, your browser, let's here Spotify handling of this information, misinformation on Joe Rogan's podcast, takes heat from critics. Joe Rogan says he'll do better research. Goes on to say here, Joe Rogan responds to Neil Young, Spotify, and other places say that he apologized, says the problem's not going away. And if you go on social media, it says that he apologized, he apologized. But I did find one article that's interesting that doesn't go all the way, but it does at least have some context and some perspective in this. And this is from, I hadn't heard this outlet, but it's called Desert News, I'm sorry, Discreet News, I guess. I guess that's right. Perspective, Joe Rogan didn't cave and neither did Spotify. Well, I'm not here to say he caved or didn't cave. I don't know. I just know he didn't apologize. And I do know that that opening that he gave the media by saying, I'm sorry for pissing you off, just gave them the wedge that they needed to further that gap and to further push forth the narrative that they want to push forth. Again, go check out the other video. But I do want to say something here in this particular article because they do cover some things that are pretty important to understand. Number one, he didn't cave. That's their opinion. I don't know. I would say he definitely was simpering in his style of messaging. Okay. He was, he was like, how did I get here? What's going on? You know, I'm just trying to present the truth and we get into that here right now. The author of this article is Jennifer Graham. Says Joe Rogan finally weighed in on the controversy swirling around his podcast on Spotify uncharacteristically what he said was not especially controversial. Rogan pushed back against the charges that his show spreads dangerous misinformation. Again, check out the other video. Saying that he simply gives a platform to people whose take is different from the mainstream. That's really all he was doing, but there's more to that. Again, I hate saying the other video, but go, go check it out. But he apologized to Neil Young and Johnny Mitchell singers, basically for saying, I'm sorry for pissing you off. That's not an apology. He was just trying to be nice. But again, you can't be nice to these people. You gotta, cause they're gonna use any kind of weakness they see and they're going to exploit that for their own purposes. And they're doing that right now. He said, I'm not a doctor, I'm not a scientist. I'm just a person who sits down and talks to people and has conversations with them. And he started the podcast basically by having some conversations with some friends and they kicked it off and the interviewees got more and more established and more important and more famous. And then that grew and grew and grew. And because he's such a great interviewer, that really helped him grow his podcast and his brand. And you know, a lot of people like Joe Rogan for 
the reasons that uh, people are saying that he just tells it the way he sees it without being, I hate to use the word, but he being judgmental, he just says it. I don't know, I don't listen to his podcast that frequently. I want to listen to maybe two or three of them. And it's the ones that are in question that I watched and I thought they were really, really good. He had the huge platform. And first, let me get this off my chest right here. Okay, so people get on me for backing people like uh, Kanye West or backing people like, let's say, uh, Cardi B or backing people like um, Kwame Brown was one, but I didn't really talk to him about on this channel. But people who are liberals who happen to say the truth every now and then. You know, this is a saying that says, even a broken clock is right twice a day. And that's my take on it. If you're telling a true information or something that's truthful, to me, that's awesome, okay? And if you have a bigger platform, that's even more awesome. And if it goes against the narrative that people try to tell us, that's the best situation altogether. Doesn't mean that I'm lying in bed with these people. Doesn't mean that I align with their worldview. It just means that they told the truth and I acknowledge that they told the truth. Simple as that. You know, so anyway, I'll leave it there. So something to say here. <laughs> so in the video here, it says that there is a content advisory that they're going to be putting on the videos now that show that the COOF and other things promote information hub that contains information about the COOF and the, you know what, all right. And so they're going to do some disclaimer on the front of it. So it seems like Spotify and Joe Rogan have come to an agreement. They're going to put the information out there. And Joe Rogan did say that he was going to be careful about not putting the other side on it. But at the same time, he's not necessarily a journalist. It's a podcast. He should have whoever he wants on the show, but it's his show and I get it. So, but again, you got to check out the other video. Cause I'm going to, I'm going to cut loose on that one. And so, okay, let's go here. It says, but the fact that the Joe Rogan experience, which is important to understand here, this thing is huge. is exclusively on Spotify shows the worth of the comedian and former fear factor host to the service, which signed him in 2020 for a deal estimated in excess of $100 million. The New York Times called Joe Rogan too big to cancel. And so far, there's no evidence to suggest this claim was wrong. Although some have noted that Spotify might be more concerned if Taylor Swift and other artists pulled the music. Again, yeah, there is some pressure there, but that's neither here nor there. The fact is he should be allowed to say what he wants to say and Spotify being the company that they are have certain rights too to their brand. But at the same time, his podcast is about having conversations with people who are different than other people, particularly who are interesting, as he mentioned, and that's all that was. And so, but there's more to it than that. Again, for the last time, check out the gate that the I'm about to film that right now because I can't hold back any further. With that being said, what do you think about this? Did he cave or does it matter? Do you agree that he, that he didn't apologize? I say he did not. Saying you're sorry for something that is not relevant to what you're being accused of, it's not an apology. It's just saying you're sorry. He said, I'm sorry you're pissed. <laughs> That's, I mean, you know what I'm, I'm sorry you're offended. That's not an apology, okay? An apology is saying, I'm deeply, I was wrong. I, I wronged you. I acknowledge that. I'm sorry. I won't do it again. That's an apology. That's not what happened. So the media is using this situation for their own purposes as usual. And so with that, I'm curious to know what you think. Please comment below. And if you like what we do on this channel, we take pop culture and politics and filter TV in a conservative manner, then please check out some more content that we have for you right here.